Batman the White Knight universe is a world where reality smacked Batman across the face. The actions that he was performing were not in fact helping Gotham, and he ended up in prison over it. Last time, Batman discovered that Gotham had fallen under the power of Derek Powers, and a new Batman was going around the city in an experimental suit. So we decided that only he could stop this new Batman and Derek. He broke out of prison where he discovered that the Joker had implanted something into his head, something that would project an image of the Joker with all of the memories of the Joker, something to keep Bruce company on the adventure. And thus Batman and the Joker began their adventure to try and stop their enemies. This is Comic Story. I create audio dramas of my favorite comic books, and I leave out enough that there's something for you to collect, be it extra plot, context, or artwork. All alterations are for copyright purposes, and don't forget to check out one of our long-standing sponsors, G Fuel, where you can use the code COMICS to get 10% off of your order, or Shortboxed, a great way to start your graded comic book collection today. Click the link down below to enter a contest to win one. Today we're going to be covering Batman Beyond the White Knight, issues 3 and 4. Bruce stood in silence as Harley continued to yell at him. They had gotten Mary to avoid her having to testify against him when Powers was going to extend his sentence when he was sent to jail. Of course, Bruce argued against it at first, but Harley had finally built herself a new life, and marrying Bruce would really just be a step back. Harley tells him that it wasn't his decision to make. She chose to embrace her family, and whether he likes it or not, he is a big part of that, which is why it was so painful when he abandoned her, and why she is now walking out on him. Harley storms out, and the Joker says that he can normally see the angles from a mile away, but he was not expecting this. Were you ever going to tell me? Bruce sighs. It's not like that. She's just a friend. But Joker stops him. I can tell that you're lying. Your heart rate fluctuates. And Bruce isn't happy that he's reading him. Stop reading my vitals. But before they could argue any further, the door opens up and Harley's son Bryce runs in shouting, Uncle Bruce, you're here to help, right? Joker stares for a moment. Oh God, my son, he's so beautiful. He's got his mother's nose. Bruce tells Bryce to slow down. What are you talking about helping? And Bryce says that it's Jackie. She and mom had a fight and Jackie found something that she wasn't supposed to. A police file on what happened to the Joker and ran away. Joker shouts, They know how I died? That information was supposed to be classified. That's not important right now. We have to find my daughter, please. But though Bruce is talking to Bryce, his comments are directed towards Joker, telling him to try and stay calm. Of course he's going to find her. As Bruce begins to get ready to leave, he begins to spray paint over the Batman symbol on his armor. And Joker asks, what is he doing? Put on the suit and let's get out of here. Bruce tells him that he will find his daughter and he will deal with powers. But we're going to do this without Batman. Well, then it's going to take more than a coat of paint to get away from Batman. He has a way of showing up when you least expect it. And Bruce tells him, so do I. But Harley returns asking, who is he talking to? Bruce brushes it off. It's just me in my old age. Feels like I'm losing my mind lately. Harley tells him that he's come to the right place. Do you have something you want to share? And Joker whispers that it might not be best to mention him. Bruce instead asks her, what do you know about panic attacks? She says that she isn't really surprised that he'd have them, considering his history. She's amazed that he didn't have one sooner. She can give him something for anxiety, but what he really needs is actual therapy. At some point, she's going to need him to tell her what's really going on because she knows that he's hiding something. And what's with the new suit? Bruce gears up telling her that it was a prototype before he made the Beyond suit. It can't become invisible like the other one, but it can still cloak him from cameras and sensors. Even the belt. Everything is made from low tech to avoid detection. Harley then asks, Is your plan to turn the city against powers to have them watch a hundred pointy-eared robocops? Pummel an arthritic pensioner into the ground? What about Nightwing and Batgirl? Bruce tells her no. I can't involve any of them. Or you. Meanwhile, back at the GTO headquarters, Powers says that he wants to get one thing straight. They let him slip through their hands twice now. Grayson tells him, Bruce must have someone feeding him information. He kept talking to himself when being arrested. Maybe that's how he found the weakness in the GTO suit. And Powers says, or maybe he's losing his mind. Why else would he accuse me of stealing the Beyond suit? Grayson tells him that Bruce can be misguided and stubborn, but he's not crazy. 
There has to be a reason why he thinks that you're behind this. Powers stops him again. Remember that the Wayne legacy was all a lie, further tarnished by Batman's vigilanteism. Whereas my legacy in Gotham will stand the test of time. Don't question the loyalty of the man who got you here. I suggest that you focus your efforts on Bruce and not me. But back over with Bruce, he's swinging from rooftop to rooftop, and the Joker says that he wasn't really digging the new suit at first, but he's got to admit, it's sort of growing on me. The coat is like a cape. The pointy bits around the face sort of look like ears. And I'm kind of liking your beard, which probably wouldn't work with a cowl anyway. Bruce tells him, great, because your approval means so much to me. But then the Joker asks, so are we going to talk about your history with powers? Sure, I can easily read what's on the internet, but what's your side of the story? Bruce swings off telling him his real name is Derek Powlitz. His family immigrated to Gotham years before he was born. His father was a brilliant engineer who got hired at Wayne Cryotech by Victor Freeze, and Derek eventually followed in his father's footsteps. Derek was a model employee, but that all changed when he learned the truth about the cryotech and its ties to the Nazi scientist Baron von Fries. Rather than let him quit, Lucius Fox agreed to transfer him to an entirely different part of Wayne Tech, the automotive division. Within a few years, Derek Powers completely revamped Wayne Motors, but he wasn't satisfied. He didn't just want to make vehicles. He wanted to make them for the military, load them with guns, bombs, and other weapons. Of course, Bruce wouldn't allow that. So he threatened to shut Powers down and his response caught him off guard. He threatened to out him as Batman, which Batman at the time had only been around for a few months. And while he took spare parts from Wayne Motors, Power knew his designs and patents. Rather than blowing his cover, he suggested that they make a deal, turn Wayne Motors into Batman's R&D. And if he agreed to funding him, he'd provide Batman with all the tools that he'd ever need. As Bruce goes on, he suddenly hears his name called as Terry McGinnis jumps down and the Batman Beyond suit challenging him. Bruce looks at him. Just give me back this suit. I don't want any trouble. Sorry, but I can't do that. Not until Bruce throws a pair of batarangs and they bounce off of Terry's chest and he charges in. Whatever you and Powers are planning, it won't work. Terry grabs a hold of Bruce, throwing him into a set of pipes, jumping on him, asking, is it true? Were you the one who had him killed? Bruce coughs. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And Terry grabs him. I'm not giving back the suit until someone tells me what is really going on. At that moment, Terry is struck in the face with a red staff. And as he looks up, Duke is standing there in a Robin suit. Give it up, kid. Bruce is surprised. At Bruce is as surprised as everyone else. What the hell? And Terry throws a battering aimed at Bruce, but Duke jumps in to deflect it. And as he puts himself between Bruce and the projectile, Terry rushes in, slamming himself into Duke, and then throws Bruce off of the building. Bruce's body spirals as it plummets to the ground, and he lands back first onto a GCPD patrol car. And the officer shouts, Holy! Is that a way thinking this? And then a woman shouts to get out of her way. Barbara Gordon pushes her way through, yelling, Are you alive? Bruce! After being taken away, Bruce wakes up in a hospital bed and the first thing that he sees is Duke, still in this Robin costume that they made. Take off that costume now. Barbara tells him that he should be thankful that Duke was there to save his ass. Besides, the city loved seeing Batman and Robin back in action. Bruce turns to her asking, why won't anyone listen to me? Batman is finished. This has to stop. Now take off the damn suit. Duke says no can do. He's under strict orders. And then Bruce immediately turns back to Barbara, and she tells him that he can't do this alone. The city's in trouble. Stuff that she can't fix. They need Batman and Robin. It's as simple as that. Bruce asks, So you're arresting me? She says that technically she arrested him two days ago. With all the witnesses, she didn't have a choice. But then she told reporters that he overpowered two guards in the recovery unit. Bruce begins to suit up again and looks at her. Now tell me about Dick. What the hell happened between you? Barbara takes out a photo, stating that they were serious for a while. Even proposed to him, but things got complicated. Bruce looks at the photo of Dick and Barbara and their child, and he asks, You had a baby? Barbara tells him, yeah. The child is five now, real Hellraiser. But if you want to know what's going on with Dick, you need to talk to him yourself. All he ever wanted was your approval. Winning him over might not be that complicated. You just need to have a heart-to-heart -heart with him. 
Bruce says, that's not really my specialty. And Barbara tells him that he spent all of those years alone in his cell. Plenty of time to reflect. Maybe, maybe he's grown wiser. But as she looks back to see Bruce already gone, she says, or maybe you're still the same disappearing jackass you always were. Barbara sighs, telling Duke that the other Batman mentioned the name Warren McGinnis. She's going to look into it while he hits the streets, and... And when she looks, she finds Duke gone as well. Really? Both of you? How did my dad put up with this for so long? Later, once Duke is out on the street, Barbara does her investigation and radios in that she found a file on Warren McGinnis. Looks like he was killed a few months ago. GTO have a suspect in custody, an assassin named Mr. Fix. However, McGinnis was an engineering specialist that was working for Derek Powers. Duke asks, do you think that he killed him? And Barbara says maybe. The report was filed by an officer, Kimmy Flint. Ring any bells? Duke says that Flint is Grayson's second in command. The two of them are tight, usually on patrol together. He'll head to the GTO and see if he can find anything. But back over at Wayne Manor, Bruce sneaks into the lower levels with the Joker asking, what exactly are we doing here and what the hell is that thing? Bruce sees what the Joker's pointing at and tells him, It's a Batmobile. That one can fly. It's a prototype that I never got working. At that moment, there's a growl as a giant Great Dane steps out. And Joker yells, It's a dog! Give him some food from your belt or something! Bruce says that that's actually a good idea. And as he does, Joker says, The dog seems pretty tame. Must have wandered in here after the collapse. But back with Duke, he sneaks into the GTO building and goes into Flint's office and begins to access her computer. He tells Barbara that he's downloading the hard drive now, and Barbara tells him nice work. She'll comb through it and see if there was anything left out on the McGinnis report. However, just as he begins to sneak back out, a voice tells him, Wow, haven't seen my old Robin suit in a while. Surprised it fits, Duke. Duke looks up to see Grayson, and Barbara tells him that they cannot let him know that they're working together. So Grayson tells him, If you needed something, all you had to do was ask. It's a little hard to trust you lately, Dick considering who you're aligned with. Powers has nothing to do with the new Batman. Bruce is an angry old man, and he's just confused. Now tell me where Bruce is, and I won't arrest him. Grayson pulls out a gun, and Duke reaches for his staff. Grayson fires the shot, but Duke deflects it with his arm guard. Duke then sweeps Grayson's feet out, telling him, That's twice in a row you got your ass kicked. Too much time behind the desk? What happened to the Nightwing that we all love and remember? But back down in the old Batcave, Bruce finishes with the last of his adjustments and turns the car on. As the engines roar to life, he says that he might have got it working. But through all of that, Joker is basically ignoring him. I got it! We should name the dog Ace! Bruce asks him, what's with you in poker cards? Well, I'm sort of like the Joker card, the best card in the deck, right? So why not name the dog the second best? Just then, the car begins to fly upwards, and Bruce tells Ace to hold on to something and rockets out of the cave and out into the open road. But during this... The disgraced Jason Todd walks to his bike as he sees Bruce fly overhead. He sighs as he puts on his helmet, asking, What are you getting us into now? And he revs his bike and begins to follow. And there you have it, but don't worry, we're going to be getting to the Red Hood spinoff very, very soon, and the Harley Quinn spinoff very soon. So stick around, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you guys next time, right here.